Hi guys. So in this video, we will attempt to predict stock prices using RNN. Now RNN itself has issues on its own. So that leaves us with LSTM or uh, GRU. Now there is uh, another model in RNN family called bi-directional RNN. Then also, of course, you could stack LSTM cells and then uh, buy LSTM cells as well. So this covers RNN family. So we will not go for too much complex models. We'll just go with uh, LSTM. So we load our data set again, Google stock prices, set frequency as daily, uh, fill in A, everything is done. We are plotting things, check for seasonality, decomposition looks good. So this is same stuff as the previous video. Now here is the thing. So we want to feed our input to a neural network. And in neural network, so we have these weights and biases. So I have talked about them in time series forecasting video. And then I have a whole series on that in my deep learning videos. So in that we have to do feature scaling so that it plays nicely with those tiny weights and biases. So you could do min max scalar or standard scalar as well. Uh, but then I don't think we have much of outliers. So we just go with min max scalar. Otherwise we would have gone for a standard scalar, which would be more robust for the outliers. But then again, uh, if you have outliers, so it could bias the model. So maybe just remove them and then fill in the null values. So the best is if you are not replacing that with mean or median, uh, maybe that is good enough for practical reasons for, but uh, you could even forecast them as well. So we do min max scalar and everything is fine. Uh, here, here is a cool thing, time series generator. So what it's going to do is, so let's say we have a sequence of numbers, let's say one through 10, and we need five numbers in the sequence to predict the sixth item. So our data set is going to look like one, two, three, four, five, and then the uh, independent variable. So these are all the independent variables, the features. And then the label or the dependent variable is going to be six. So in our time series, we are going to have 24 of uh, those uh, input stuff. And then uh, we want the 25th item as the label. So we do time series uh, generator stuff here. And uh, that's a, the generator. So it's actually a Python generator convert it into a list and then look inside what's there. So uh, we load our LSTM cell activation is uh, relu. So it will take care of the vanishing gradients, exploding gradients. So for exploding gradients, we need something called gradient clipping. So do not want to get too much carried away, but relu is for to take care of vanishing gradients. And of course we have to specify our input shape so so that uh, the matrix multiplication applies and then uh, these are the hidden layer stuff and this is the output so we are dealing with a numerical variable here which is one so mm, we just need one cell there optimizer is adam it is uh, kind of a best of all the worlds of optimizers and then loss is of course uh, mean squared error is good enough so we have total parameters as 40,000. So that is the number of weights and biases. That's fine. So we fit our generator and then we look at our loss. So we are doing good. Uh, so our loss is uh, minimized. Uh, so I think we should be able to make good predictions, isn't it? Okay, now here is the fun part. So in our training set, the last label was the last item essentially and 24 items before that were the independent variables which means in the testing set the first item that's going to be is going to be the last 24 items of the training set 
so which means here in the in a training set so what is the last item uh, what is the last uh, dependent variable the y is going to be an x for the testing set so that's the thing so this is our first batch of stuff and then we are going to use that in our consequent steps so after that we just have uh, this thing why we are doing it this way because we want to make predictions off of predictions because we do not know the future because that hasn't happened yet so i have seen youtube videos very big channels like millions of subscribers and viewers they make this mistake they treat the testing set as a regression problem and then they generate features off of it that's not what we are doing we are dealing with time series data we are forecasting so you can't have features from your training set all your features has to come from the training set itself so the prediction that you are going to make is going to become the feature for the next item that you are going to predict so all that's fine finally we want to do a inverse transform because we did this min max scalar and then let's plot it and there it is so this uh, lstm also it sucks badly well not as badly as uh, uh, the arima model so arima model was just drawing a straight line you know it just gave up you know here is the average and here is the straight line this is going ambitious so this is telling that the stock price is going to actually increase but in reality the stock market is so volatile it goes up to a point and then it goes down and then it goes its own way so maybe you could argue that uh, you know isn't that something arima already told us maybe arima was much closer in fitting to the actual data maybe arima model is much better than lstm than doing all this deep learning stuff maybe you are right so actually looking at the errors you are actually right so is this the end of world is it is it like we can't make predictions using deep learning well may not be uh, so before that uh, let's have a look on uh, some of the thinned out data this is uh, our test and then this is our original data original test data this is our forecast data well what you could do is uh, you could increase the model complexity you could stack the lstm layers you could also try with by lstm so those are the stuff and i would actually do that uh, i will try stacking lstm layers and then uh, i would also try the by lstm so we'll make few videos on the rnn family since we have everything we just need need to change the model and we are good so this is uh, so looking at the uh, volatility of the stock market data this is actually humbling you know you you may think that you are very smart and then having deep learning lstm going on to predict the stock prices but then it sucks that's actually humbling and stock market is really volatile that's why most people do not do that they go for fixed income securities bonds and stuff nobody does this stuff so i will upload uh, this code in and you will find the link uh, the link in the description as always and uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you next time and we'll talk about the by lstm and stacked lstm layers and we will also go for uh, transformers and then um, variational auto encoder stuff so cnns as well so whole bunch of deep learning stuff is going to go on for this data set so we'll see if we find any optimistic results and we have to test let's say even if we so this you know what this means this is actually developing a strategy and we have a lot of data we have like five years data we could even make it like 10 years or whatever so let's say we even if we figure out a good strategy so we still have to do a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of back testing before we actually invest into stock market because there you will lose real money if you do not have a robust strategy so i will uh, see you next time and maybe i may have a series on financial data specifically so we'll see have a good day bye